यम ही नव्यत यंतिये ते पुरुषम पुरुषर्षभा समदुख सुखम धीरम स्वमृतत्वाय कल्पते सो कृष्ण से यम हु यम ही और वन हु नव्यत यंती वन हु डज वॉट हु डज नॉट बिकम व्यत यंती हु इज नॉट डिस्टर्ब्ड By what? Uh, sama dukkha sukham. He is not disturbed by either happiness or distress and maintains equanimity and maintains as a dhira. Uh, you remember the word dhira is used in 13th verse and uh, then 14th verse talked about toleration, tolerance. from happiness distress from heat and cold from dualities from agitation so if one can remain steady is a dhira uh, that person purusham purushar shabha that person arjuna is being called as purushar shabha because krishna expects arjuna to be such a person and uh, so one who can tolerate that one who can remain steady one who is not disturbed by this dualities that person that dhira saha that person amritatvaya kalpate is eligible for liberation so this is the first condition for liberation i request everyone to please be on mute and let me mute them okay i muted them okay so the, that person so here is the qualification mentioned for a liberated person so if you want to be called or if someone has to be called as eligible for liberation that means they have to first satisfy this condition what is that they should not be disturbed by the apparent dualities they should be tolerant they should remain steady equanimity maintain equanimity that is the first condition so amrut tatva kalpate and um, like we discussed yesterday why tolerance is important because when you have a particular goal in life when you have a particular focus in life you cannot let yourself be distraught and distracted by the onslaughts of distress and happiness prabhupad brings up this example of varnashrama institution in the purport so we all know by now varnashrama means we have different um, social orders and spiritual orders social orders means brahmana kshatriya vaishya and sudra spiritual orders means brahmachari grihastha vanaprastha and sanyasa so when one properly follows varnashram dharma a person can typically become a sanyasi or is required to take sanyasa in the final stage of life and it is meant for a particular purpose it is meant for completely getting rid of material attachments and prepare oneself to go back to godhead but it is not a joke sanyasa is a painstaking situation it is meant for very um, sincere people serious people who want to get out of this material entanglement so if one takes that path one cannot be deviated by a slight agitation one should remain tolerant because the goal is important the destination is important than the road isn't it just because 
you your road is not that great uh, you will you stop going to the destination like when we go to pilgrimage we often find you know the roads are pretty bad going to some remote place but it doesn't mean that we stop going isn't it when we start out going to the destination we don't look for a good road uh, okay so this road is good let me this road is good let me go on this road for us the road is not important the destination is important if somebody asks you where are you going will you say i am going wherever there is a good road that is not the right answer and that should not be the right answer our goal is not to get deviated take a detour and go for a trip for a pleasure trip just enjoying the drive on the road our goal is to go to the destination and therefore we might have to hit bad roads but that should not stop our progress and that person when he is tested and is suitable to be uh, not disturbed by these conditions is eligible for liberation and sanyasa is one example prabhupad is bringing up and like that there are many examples there is in the spiritual societies also a spiritual master gives many services and one should not be distraught and distracted and deviated from that service irrespective of various agitations one should be tolerant our goal is to satisfy the spiritual master the small things should not matter for us oh this thing is not done to me properly therefore i will not do so this condition should be ideal then only i will do so these kind of things are distractions so here prabhupad writes continuing on the sanyasa situation one who is serious about making his life perfect surely adopts the sanyasa order of life in spite of all difficulties the difficulties usually arise from having to sever family relationships to give up the connection of wife and children but if anyone is able to tolerate such difficulties surely his path to spiritual realization is complete so as we had read and had heard prabhupad when he was getting his spiritual master in his dream and shri lakshmi siddhanta saraswati thakur would come in his dreams and would urge him you come you come along with me take sanyasa like that and prabhupad would be horrified at the thought not that he was not a devotee he doesn't want to engage in krishna consciousness he is a pure devotee of the lord but just to show an example how difficult it is to give up family life for a materialist family life is the most important attachment in one's life he cannot live without family but even prabhupad was horrified at bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur calling him so somehow or other prabhupad said my spiritual master dragged me out of this material life out of his causeless mercy and he made me accept this renounced order of life through the request and in one sense force of my god brothers and uh, he was glad that his spiritual master did that out of his mercy and uh, so and we know what happened after that without becoming a sanyasi you can deliver your family and you are probably friends and you know society members but by becoming a sanyasi you expand the scope of preaching sanyasa means traveling preacher he goes around his only business in life is to deliver people krishna consciousness so like that every order be it sanyasi or grihastha or a vanaprastha or a brahmana or a kshatriya or a vaishya or a sudra everyone has a particular duty and one should do that duty to the best of their ability without getting deviated by any other thoughts so here indirectly krishna is saying o oh, arjuna you are a kshatriya and if you become deviated distracted agitated by so called happiness and distress in the course of your duty then you are not eligible for liberation it is not a conducive path for liberation 
So that is the reason why, these are all the reasons Krishna is giving. Of course, on the surface, these are reasons for urging Arjuna to fight. But if you go beyond the surface, deep into the surface, this is immense philosophical understanding. What is the basis of liberation for everyone? Is one should do their duty, either Varnashrama duty or the spiritual duty, without getting affected in uh, by uh, exterior disturbances. Prabhupada also mentions about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taking sannyasa. Uh, Lord Chaitanya took sannyasa at the age of 24 and his dependents, young wife as well as old mother, had no one else to look after them. Yet, for a higher cause, he took sannyasa and was steady in the discharge of higher duties. That is a way of achieving liberation from material bondage. So many people ask this question. So Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Um, then why did He show the example of giving up family at such a young age? And an extension to that question is, uh, why do so many youngsters give up their families and join the Hare Krishna movement? Isn't it setting a bad example? But let's stick, stick to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's example. So Prabhupada writes in his books many points about why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyasa at such a young age. So one such reason, there are many reasons why he did that. One such reason is to allow people to quickly come to the platform of Krishna Consciousness. What is the reason? To allow people to quickly come to the platform of Krishna Consciousness. So in one of the purports in Adi Leela, Prabhupada writes, um, So one chant, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra or Krishna's name, one is liberated and goes back to go home, back to Godhead. Uh, simply by doing that. So this Krishna Consciousness must be achieved through the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. This chanting of holy name has to be done through the medium, through the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Panchatattva. One cannot be complete in Krishna consciousness unless he accepts Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates as the only means for success. And so Prabhupada writes, it is because of these considerations that the Lord accepted sannyasa. For thus people would offer him respect and very quickly come to the platform of Krishna consciousness. So because people don't understand this principle, but they do understand giving respect to a sannyasi. So any saintly person in Indian culture, uh, even in foreign culture, if they see a monk, they get they show respect. So if they respect Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just imagine what will they have, what will happen to them. They will progress by leaps and bounds. And uh, through the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they can get the mercy of Krishna by taking the Hare Krishna Mantra. So therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, who inaugurated this Krishna consciousness movement, because without his mercy, one cannot be elevated to the transcendental platform of Krishna consciousness. So out of his causeless mercy, he accepted sannyasa at such a young age. That is one reason. The other reason is to uh, deliver people who cannot appreciate the rasa of Radha Krishna and who are actually committing offenses to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because of his acting on an... Uh, platform of love for Krishna in the mood of gopis. One time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of ecstasy in Krishna consciousness, in the mood of gopis, he was, I mean, for love for gopis, he was chanting the name gopi, 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 gopi like that. He was in complete absorption about the glories of the gopis, about the exalted position of gopis. So in the transcendental 
love, he was chanting gopis' names. And uh, there were some of his students. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his young age, he was teaching Nyaya philosophy. Nyaya means logic. He was a great logician. People would get scared to come to him for argument. And uh, so he was teaching Nyaya. And he had students. And his students came to him and he, they were bewildered. Why this person is becoming mad like this and chanting gopis' names? And they thought they knew better than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in devotion. They said, no, why are you chanting like this? Um, you know, gopis' names, you should chant Krishna's name. Or you should uh, uh, not chant others' names like this. And uh, they, they said many insulting things. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu becomes furious by hearing this. Um, first of all, they said, why don't you chant Hare Krishna? It will be a more pious activity than chanting gopis. So that itself is a aparada. Why? What is the aparada they committed by saying Hare Krishna mantra is a pious activity? What is the 10 offenses that we read in the morning? Because we do not consider it as a chanting of Hare Krishna mantra as a ritualistic activity or a, that is one of the offenses. Yes. To consider the 8th eighth eighth offense is to consider the chanting of Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities mentioned in the Vedas, in the Karmakanda sections. It is not a material pious activity. It is a transcendental activity, service to the Lord, chanting of the holy name. It should not be compared even to anything material. So that is the one offense. The second offense they did is to consider the spiritual personality, the pure devotee, the exalted gopis as not on the transcendental platform, on the mundane platform. So any pure devotee's name you chant it will give you eternal benefit. So the chanting of Gopi's name is also on the transcendental platform, which they did not understand. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he could not hear this blasphemy, he started chasing them in the most uh, extraordinary circumstances. And these people started running. And it was most unusual situation. And these people started running and after a while, they started gathering some people and they started coming back and attacking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then, of course, they did stop it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, you know, these people are going to hell by treating me like an ordinary man and committing offenses. And therefore, he said he had to take sannyasa. Because at least that way, externally, by looking at his dress, people would offer him obeisances. People will have respect on him. Those people who cannot appreciate him as Radha Krishna, just by offering obeisances to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, um, you know, those people who, uh, without accept him accepting sannyasa, who treated him as an ordinary person, now who would offer obeisances. So that would help them help uh, diminish their material distress and ultimately make them liberated. So that is the reason why he accepted. And uh, there are many other reasons. He accepted sannyasa to facilitate preaching. So he wanted to show how to actually act as a sannyasi. There were many sannyasis who forgot the mission of being a sannyasi. So therefore he wanted to teach how by remaining a sannyasi one should always teach about Krishna consciousness. Even though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord himself and he didn't identify himself with any of the Varnas. In fact, one of his biggest teachings is I am not a Brahmana, I am not a sannyasi, I am not a Grihastha, I am not a Vanaprastha. Naham vipro nacha narapatir na pivaishyo na sudro Naham varni nachagrihapatir no vanastho yatirva. I am not any of this. But who you are? 
ಕಿಂತು ಪ್ರೋದ್ಯನ್ ನಿಖಿಲ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಮೃತಾಬ್ದೇರ್ ಗೋಪಿ ಭರ್ತು ಪದ ಕಮಲಯೋರ್ ದಾಸ ದಾಸ ಅನುದಾಸ ಐ ಎಂ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಎ ಮೀನಿಯಲ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಟೈನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ the damsels of rajabhumi that is how he identified but still he made it a point to accept sanyasa and uh, for these reasons and as a sanyasi he led a very strict life as a sanyasi he would uh, sleep um on ordinary bed made of you know banana barks and his devotees would uh, become agitated by looking at him undergoing all these austerities so jagadanand prabhu would make him a nice bed and cot with soft cotton and cushion jetanya mahaprabhu would reject it and uh, but uh, jagadanand prabhu is he likes uh, satyabhama incarnation of satyabhama he would become uh, uh, this, this thing against the lord and the lord would have to accept it so when chaitanya mahaprabhu wants to do a strict sanyasa life his devotees want him to enjoy like the supreme lord so in the chaitanya mahaprabhu you will find that in can incompatibility on one side the lord wants to teach people how to be a sanyasi on the other side the devotees of the lord want him to be like the supreme lord enjoying the opulences that he has to so beautiful pastimes in chaitanya charitamrita and uh, that is another reason why he accepted sanyasa to teach the sanyasis how to facilitate preaching and uh, the other reason is to deliver the mayavadi sanyasis we know the past time of prakashananda saraswati being a mayavadi sanyasi in varanasi he um, without knowing chaitanya mahaprabhu his party would insult him oh he is like a sentimentalist chanting and dancing on the streets he is on the emotional platform he doesn't have the knowledge of the vedanta he is just acting like a sentimental fool and they request him to come for a debate so he goes and we know what happens he defeats all of them and by seeing his humility and his radiance his effulgence all of them get converted to vaishnavas and so that is the reason he wanted to because he accepted from a mayavada sampradaya sanyasa from keshava bharati which is not the vaishnava sanyasa path that is the reason to relate himself along with the mayavadi so that he can convert them to vaishnavas so there are many other reasons why he did it so one should not misunderstand one should understand from the right source from the bona fide spiritual master why chaitanya mahaprabhu accepted sanyasa at such a young age um, and similarly when devotees also accept the krishna consciousness movement and join the temple it is not that uh, they are losers in life it is not that they have no sense of duty in life it is just that the mission of the lord or to say oneself first is more important than to save others a doctor a physician heals thyself first first he becomes vaccinated he be- he become he he takes the antiseptic before he delivers it to others so by becoming a pure devotee of the lord is first taking antiseptic ourselves and then one becomes proficient and qualified and can be in the best position to give welfare to others including our family and it is said that one who becomes a pure devotee he delivers 14 generations before and after so what best service can one offer in fact we had seen many of the cases where uh, the parents of the devotees even though they did they led a materialistic life when they passed away they were in a very favorable situation in the midst of krishna consciousness hearing the holy name or surrounded by the holy name surrounded by devotees uh, with the tulsi mala so they passed away in the most auspicious situation what more auspicious service you can do 
than getting your parents or your dependents pass away in the most caring situation in the hands of Krishna. So anyway, there is many to much more to it than just this. So these are some of the reasons why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted sannyasa and why and what this verse talks about in whatever service, whatever situation you are in, you should focus on the goal than on the deviation. So I'll stop here. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yes. I have a question. You mentioned uh, to Chaitanya Prabhu, to the means of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you can get a liberation and to the Panchatattva. Yeah. What is this Panchatattva? Yeah. So Panchatattva is the five personalities or the four personalities in addition to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the four associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, when we chant uh, Hare Krishna, we also chant before Hare Krishna this Panchatattva Mahama, Panchatattva Mantra, not Mahamantra. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhara Srivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. So this is the mantra we chant before Hare Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Sri Krishna Chaitanya and uh, Prabhu Nityananda is Balram himself who came as Nityananda. Sri Advaita he is Advaita Acharya, who is uh, one of the prominent personalities in Chaitanya Leela, who is the incarnation of Mahavishnu himself, and because of whom, whose fervent prayers Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to deliver the world. Prabhu Advaita Gadadhara. Gadadhara is Radharani herself, who came to associate. Uh, assist Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he represents the devotional energy, internal potency of the Lord and um, uh, Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Sri Vasadi, Sri Vasa represents the pure devotee of the Lord uh, who is the incarnation of Narada Muni and uh, Adi means other devotees, other similar devotees like Sri Vasa so Panchatattva glorifies the incarnation of the Lord Krishna as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and also glorifies his expansions, his incarnations, his associates, his devotional energy, his internal potency and along with his pure devotees. So when we chant that mantra, we get the blessings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to uh, accelerate our progress in Krishna consciousness. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. Hare Krishna.